Holy Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my words, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We're descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anybody. What do you mean by saying you'll make us free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place in there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That's some good news to hear today, isn't it? Well, dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, really, I was tossing and turning last night with this idea because I was thinking, you know, those that are confirming their faith today, something they really enjoyed talking about was helping tell stories in unique and exciting ways. Anybody want to tell a story right now? Uh, good, because I don't have a story for you to tell. But I really wanted you to th- I was trying to think, do any of these lessons lend themselves to something they could tell in their own words? And believe me, it would have been exciting and you'd never forget that Bible passage ever again. They do an awesome job. But then I was thinking, well, there's all sorts of other memories that we have from our time in middle school youth group and middle school ministry. I bet you have some memories from your, your time at home. I bet you have time. I remember some of the deep questions that you guys keep asking. And sometimes, unfortunately, we get to say, I don't know. That's a good question. And it, you remember some of those, I'm sure. But there's other things, too, that came up, not only in your faith statements, but you continue to want to do it even in high school. And we'll probably do it again. And let's see, if Carter, oh, there's Carter. We could let him loose on you today, but we're not going to. This is a game called Monster. Oh, look at everybody in the front row at least is smiling like, oh, no. What are we talking about? Why Monster? It's also called Flashlight Tag, for those of you that may be wondering. And everybody that's not in the front row is probably like, what on earth is he talking about? And what is the point? Well, Monster is a very fun game that you play in the dark that I swear nobody has ever in the history of the world been hurt playing. You have fun and you you get to run around from the monster who has hid different pieces of the flashlight around the church. And you have to find the pieces. Does that sound scary to anybody? Your time will come and I will invite Carter and Luke back and you will be afraid. No, okay. Anyway, it's a fun game. It's, sometimes it's scary. I've heard people screaming. I've heard people laughing. It's a good time, but it's a fun game. And the key is to find all those pieces of the flashlight. You guys know that, right? Like if we were to play right now, you would know where to find every single piece in this bit room, right? I bet you can find them pretty quick. But you may be wondering, why, why, why would we talk about monster on a day like this? We want to talk about freedom. We want to talk about Jesus a little bit more. So don't talk about the monster game. Well, there are different stages in our lives, aren't there? First of all, what is this? This is water. You know, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, you guys are great who's responding. I appreciate that you guys are really responding and telling me what I'm doing here and reminding me where I'm going. This is water, yes, but what happened in water? All right, those that are affirming their faith, what are we affirming our faith in? Thank you. Baptism. Yes, great. I should have warned you there was a pop quiz today before we got to the other part. Well, yeah, we affirm our faith, and that's the beginning of where we start. Right at the waters of our baptism. Here we are. You're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I've called you by name, and you are mine. Your parents promised to bring you up, teach you the Lord's Prayer, Creed, Ten Commandments, All these things that each and every one of you are going to, in like 10 minutes or so, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. All those promises started right here. Some started when we were infants, some started when we were older, and some, who knows, maybe some people haven't been baptized, and one day they will be, and the waters will rush over them. But that's the first part, right? Well, what do we do after we're baptized? We learn a little bit, and we go to something called Sunday school. Who went to Sunday school? Okay. Okay. First of all, this side of the room apparently did not go to Sunday school. Nobody's hand shot up. Well, I'm, it's okay. I believe that you did. Okay, another question could be, who went to promised land? 
a few more hands went up. It's the same thing. It's on different days. It's a different name. But what do you do in promised land? You learn. You learn about who Jesus is and what God is up to in your life, right? In that, you learn the stories. You get to tell Christmas pageants. You get to do all of those things together. And your teachers are pretty good at it, too. You may sing some songs about Jesus. You may do all these things, and you realize, who is Jesus in my life? Who are some of the people that God has talked to? Is God talking to me today? Which leads us, then, to good old middle school youth group. Do you guys recognize this? What is this? That's right, the baptismal promises for middle school. You're going to talk about all those baptismal promises, all the things that, that you're going to say yes to today. And i got to remember, where is something in here? Oh, there's something else in here, too. Oh, okay. Somebody keeps leaving batteries all around this church. That's a horrible idea. But in here, you hear all about, more about who God is, what God's up to in your life. We dive a little bit deeper. We've answered all sorts of fun questions. We've told different stories. You've had different mentors. You've had each other. And you continue to grow and grow and grow. Does that sound familiar to those that have already had a confirmation? Do you remember confirmation? No, well, some of you haven't had confirmation, so I'm glad you don't remember confirmation yet, because we're not there. But you affirmed your faith. Some of you, I bet if I asked, did you have to memorize something, you'd say yes. Well, I'm not going to ask you to memorize today. But except for the words, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I, you got that one down, I know. But that's something that's going on. You go deeper and deeper and deeper. But then what do we have that goes around with us each and every moment? Well, we've been baptized. We've learned a little bit about Jesus. We've learned a little bit about confirmation. But we go into this place called the W-O-R-L-D. The world. Ah, there's the world. That looks pretty good. That's a good spot. And what happens in the world? We know everything about, we know a lot of things about Jesus as we go forward. We know who he is, what he's done. But what happens? Well, this particular group that's about to affirm their faith, they started coming into middle school ministry during COVID. Oh, boy, let's not talk about that again. Okay, I'm done talking about it. But that was a part of it. You've wrestled, everybody in this room's probably wrestled with, is God real? What is sin? Have I done enough? Is God absent in my life? Maybe we get angry at God. All we have to do is turn on the news and know the world is a messy, messy place, right? And we know that God is there, but sometimes it feels like God's not there. Where is God? But in the world around us, we hear these words. We sang them a little bit ago. We read them and heard them just a little bit ago about how God is a mighty fortress. Although, and this is a mighty fortress that never fails. Or as Psalm 46 reminds us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We will not fear, though the earth should change and the mountains shake and the mountains tremble and all these things going on. Because God, the Lord of hosts, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is with us. In each earth-shattering part of our life that doesn't just stop today, I guarantee you tomorrow there's going to be something. I guarantee not everybody was up and down for joy for over two hours yesterday between the hours of like two and five that it was snowing. Okay, anybody besides the two of us? Sweet, three of us. Four? Hey, yes, awesome. But I guarantee not everybody was like, this is great. Some are like, oh no, oh no, winter's coming. But all these things are a part of our lives, and through it all, through the summer, through the winter, through the fall, through the spring, through each and everything, the wars, the famines, everything that comes our way, God is with us. God is our strength and ever-present help in trouble. And we are not alone. How do we know this? If I had a nickel for every time I read the name Anne in a faith statement, I know you guys know from Anne and from others in your life that that is one way we know we are not alone. She taught you a lot. We've taught you a lot. Your parents have taught you a lot. The teachers have taught you a lot. People you may not even know out here have taught you a lot through who they are. And you continue to learn and grow and grow. And that's not only true for the front two rows. It's true for every single row and everybody out the door. We'll continue to grow and learn that as this world is troublesome and difficult and not always easy, God is with us. 
Martin Luther talks about faith. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and it is not our doing, it is a gift from God. Today, you're affirming your faith. We're all going to affirm our faith with you. I believe, I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the Holy Spirit. You're going to affirm it, and it goes with you. It doesn't just stop there. You are affirming in a God who knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then when you, we call upon him, we pray to him, God will listen. Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. It's the ways that acknowledge, in your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread with them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. And Philippians 4, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We affirm that today. We affirm that each and every day. That God is indeed with us. A mighty fortress. God is faithful. God is faithful to us. In the hard times, Jesus died and rose for us. We confess that. We trust in God. I believe in God. Those are things I've heard from a lot of people in this room. And I've heard it even from those that are about to affirm their faith today. You believed in all of that. That God is a mighty fortress. And though hordes of devils fill this land, all threatening to undo, undo us, all those things are happening. Unmoved we will stand. They cannot overtake us. The devil and all his empty promises do not have the final word. In that mighty fortress, there is indeed a light. A light that shines in your life. A light that shines in the darkness. A light that takes out every single monster. And you guys haven't failed yet, I believe, at catching the monster. In the mon That's bright light. So let me shine it up here. Or you're really going to be blinded by the light. We aren't singing that today. But all of those things are true. And I pray that this is true for all of you here in the front all of you in the back, and all of you out there. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine in a world that sometimes will try to tell us something completely different. This message is counter. And we're going to sing a new song here in just a minute that talks about that. When our hearts say peace and the world says war, we're going to hold on to this mighty fortress this amazing promise, and that is what we affirm our faith in today and always. We affirm it into the G, to the O, to the D. God, God who is with us, and as we always say on Wednesday nights, and it's true in each and every day, God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Thanks be to God. Amen.